Now this is a really cool find. Rope. Now vintage rope like this, which has, you know, had a few runs on the board, is lovely and flexible. It's got a great colour to it. The texture's just right and you can actually make some really beautiful things for the home. What I love about this kind of look too is the nautical theme is has been on trend and will continue to be on trend for a long time. So we love that, especially when you're putting in a bit of time to make something cool out of it. This can be made into the most amazing doormat. It can be made into an inside rug. It can also be used for cladding on certain things and I've got a bit of an idea of something that I would really love to clad with this. Back to the workshop. When I came across this beautiful vintage rope I had a few different ideas of what I wanted to do with it. I have made a decision. I'm going to clad this terracotta pot. So the main tool that we're going to need for this one is a hot glue gun. I love this. It's cordless. It makes it so much easier when you're working in circles like we will be. All right, so power up your glue gun. Get that happening. I'm back on the Lazy Susan. Makes it so much easier because we're going to be working in a circular fashion and I can just turn it rather than have to spin the pot. OK, so we get our first piece of rope, which has that really cool piece of metal on the front. Now we're going to stick that down. This is probably the most important piece of the whole thing because this is the foundation that you're going to build on. So you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you start piling on the pressure. Get some glue, pop it on to your piece of rope. Don't be shy. All right, now I'm going to put it right there. Now that that's in place and it's nice and solid, it's firm, I'm ready to go, what I want to do is just make sure that I use my hot glue gun to just secure this base one. I can't even tell you how important this base one is because, as I said, it is the foundation. Everything will be okay if you've got your foundations on right. Kind of like a house, really. And keep gluing and sticking and gluing and sticking all the way around. Now we get to this point. Okay, so as you can see, we're about to go into our second row. First row's done, it's dry, it's solid. Really happy with that. So now, all you need to do is you don't need to make it a great big step or a great big jump into the next one so that you've got a big piece of terracotta hanging out the bottom. Just make it a gentle incline. I mean, it's stepping out a lot already as far as the actual width on the outside's concerned. So don't be too, you know, skimpy on it. Give it just a general, gentle incline on the side and get back to your gluing. We are on the home straight now. So I'm just working on pressing the last row. Just keep working it through. Keep using your glue gun. Okay, so we are here at the lip. So once again, exactly the same as you did down the bottom. Once we get to the top, all I have to do is just make sure that the actual edge is flush with the rim. And then we're gonna have a look at it and see what it needs next. I really love the way this looks. I mean, when you find something like beautiful rope and kind of toss around ideas of what you'd like to do with it, you kind of get an idea of what it might look like, but until you actually see it on the item, like the terracotta pot in question, you just, it looks amazing. All right, so we'll just get this last little bit sealed on. Engage. There we go. Just lock him down there. All right, so at this point, because we're working in a circular motion, kind of like a snake coil, there will be a little bit that's higher than the rest. Don't worry about it. I actually really like the fact that it's layered. It doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. Ta-da! Rope now clad on pot. Looks great. We're going to put a little bit of paint around the base. So all I need to do now is I'm thinking maybe the bottom three or four rows. And all I need to do is pick a really cool colour that's going to match with this gorgeous look. I love this sea blue. Well, it's actually more like a sky blue, really, isn't it? And it will look so beautiful against this robe. Take your time with this. There is uh, quite a few nooks and crannies to get into when you're using vintage rope like this. It's quite dry. So just use a really nice napped brush. And just gently work your way around. Try and find a gradual incline that you can meet in the middle so it looks even 
And this is one of those moments where you kind of have to step away, put down the brush and just let it dry. Otherwise, you'll just keep going over it. You'll always find something to add. You just need to let it happen now. This is really, really thirsty, so it's going to dry really quickly. OK, let's have a look at it. It looks good. It's actually dried quite quickly. This is some seriously thirsty rope, it really is. And... Beautiful. Now, this is when you know that you've done really well with the glue because we moved it, nothing moved. It is so solid and it has all stayed in place and that's exactly what you want. I think that looks so great. It really does. It's going to look even better with a plant in it. I think we should have a look at one in. And I just happen to have my good friend Mavis here who's come along to the home team shed to make sure that this gorgeous planter that we've made is beautiful. And look at that. I really love this. I think it looks great. I mean, it's easy enough to do. You just need to have that time and that patience to wrap the rope around. But you can see how you can do so many projects with discarded objects, like a beautiful piece of vintage rope like this. It looks wonderful and I love the colour as well. I think this is going to look great in our shed.